A weight loss expert shares his tips to shed pounds, and they're not the ones you're used to hearing. But first, a look at your top local headlines. Good evening and thank you for joining us here on News Channel 9 tonight. I'm Oralia Ortega. He pled guilty, admitting he secretly videotaped hundreds of El Paso students to create his personal child porn collection. While that former El Paso teacher awaits sentencing, the government lays out its case, arguing Marco Alferez should serve a consecutive 60-year sentence in federal prison. News Channel 9's Stefania Jimenez obtained government documents, which include victim impact statements. Take a listen. In August, 35-year-old Marco Alfares admitted to making over 150 porn tapes of his students while he was teaching at five different area schools. Alfares told investigators that he placed a hidden camera in a dressing room before ordering kids to get completely nude while they tried on different outfits. Court documents show that in all, 393 of Alfares' students were victimized, including kids in the Viva El Paso group. Alfares also pled guilty to possessing 98 videos featuring minors engaging in hardcore sexual acts. Some of those recordings showed Alfares having sex with minors. Alfares faces a mandatory sentence of up to 30 years in prison without a chance to appeal. But the government argues that's not nearly enough. In documents obtained by News Channel 9, the government claims the following. Even with the government's request for consecutive sentencing for a total of 60 years, the defendant still may be released into our community. Any lesser sentence would guarantee it. Now we're also hearing from some of Alfares' victims and their families. He made me feel like I had no value. I have trust in no one because I feel they will do the same. SG was 13 when she was secretly videotaped by Alfares. Another woman, identified as JZ, began a sexual relationship with Alfares when she was 13. The few things have surfaced have shown me just how twisted my life has become having been under his influence, she wrote. A mother of one of Alfares's many victims also described how her family has been affected by the abuse. She wrote, quote, My daughter will forever be haunted by Mr. Alfares's actions. She will do a life sentence for what he did. He will do 20 years or so. Hardly justifiable. While some of Alfares' victims and their families want him to serve a lengthy prison sentence, Alfares' father says his son needs help not prison. He said, quote, my son needs treatment to resolve the anger, fear, and shame that has come to the abuse he suffered as a child. Alfares's fate won't be known until later this week. Stefania Jimenez, News Channel 9. Alfares is scheduled to be sentenced this Thursday in federal court. News Channel 9 will be there to let you know what happens. A garbage truck driver is recovering from his injuries after his vehicle went up in flames. The El Paso Fire Department says the driver heard a loud pop in the engine, so he pulled over, got out of the truck, then the vehicle became completely engulfed in flames. This is what is left of an El Paso City garbage truck after it exploded shortly after 8 this morning off of Brentwood Avenue in West El Paso. It took nearly two dozen firefighters to contain the fire before it could spread. The driver suffered minor burns to his arm, but fire investigators say it was the driver's quick thinking that prevented more serious injuries. Luckily, he, he, uh, he was on top of his game and he jumped out of that truck quick. And uh, I think that's what uh, prevented further injury. Uh, the, the burns on his arm weren't too bad. Uh, so, yeah, he jumped out pretty quick. Tonight, the fire department says they are investigating what caused the garbage truck to catch fire. Family and friends said they, their goodbyes today to the young El Paso woman who became a murder victim in Austin on New Year's Day. News Channel 9's Kathy Hernandez is live in the News Center with more on this story. Kathy. It was a very emotional day for everyone who knew Esme Barrera. I talked to several family friends who say she will definitely be missed. Somber and sad. That was the mood today as family and friends filled Our Lady of Assumption Catholic Church for the funeral of 29-year-old Esme Barrera. We talked to Araceli Villarreal, one of Esme's friends who says she was a person who could light up a room just with a smile. To say goodbye to her, to a person that was full of life, is just heartening, disheartening. And Esme was strange because she was just one of those personalities that you just won't forget. Esme was from El Paso, but was living in Austin working as a special needs teacher. She was found dead in her apartment early New Year's Day. It came as a shock to everyone who loved and cared for her. 
how someone could do something so um, so brutal to someone so gentle and small. It was really tragic to hear what happened. It was shocking um, to hear the way that it happened, and um, it's really sad. It Everyone we talked to described Esme the same, a small person with a very big heart. That she was really gentle, um, that she was uh, very peaceful uh, and really happy. She was a joyful child to be around. And now, all of Esme's loved ones are praying for justice. Yeah, he needs to step forward because it, be, it must be a horrible thing to live with something so horrible. I, I'll say that I want justice, you know, and I, and I believe that God will give it to us and that we're never going to forget Esme. Police in Austin say they believe the same person that killed Esme may be responsible for other attacks in the area. That person has not been caught. Live in the News Center, Kathy Hernandez, News Channel 9. Now for the stories making news beyond the borderland. The votes are being cast tonight in New Hampshire in 2012's first presidential primary. NBC projects Mitt Romney as the winner, but who comes in second and third, who emerges as a top Romney challenger, will be a big story. NBC Steve Handelsman has the latest from New Hampshire. In Goffstown on the Piscataquag River and in towns like this across New Hampshire, Republicans voted their choices, who they want to take on the president in the fall. For Romney, uh, anyone that can uh, get enough votes to beat Obama. Ron Paul, I want the dialogue to keep going. Rick Santorum, because I really want to see this country change. I voted for Huntsman because I feel he's the most moderate. The former Utah governor surged to third in New Hampshire's final tracking poll. He's looking at the next primary. And uh, South Carolina will light up because we will approve that very important point of electability. Surveys showed Ron Paul second before the actual vote. But eyes are on Rick Santorum, who nearly won in Iowa. Will he emerge as the top conservative? That we're the one that can turn this economy around. Can Newt Gingrich regain his spot as the alternative to Mitt Romney? I think it'll be a great campaign and a very clear contrast between a Reagan conservative and a Massachusetts moderate. Romney assumes he'll win here, but a weakness emerged. I like being able to fire people who provide services to me. He meant insurance companies, but Romney rivals claimed he'd admitted he got rich, raiding weak companies and laying off workers. Rick Perry today. Waiting for the company to get sick, and then they swoop in, they eat the carcass, but Romney is seemingly cruising today. He'd be the first non-incumbent Republican ever to win New Hampshire after winning Iowa. I'm Steve Handelsman, NBC News, Manchester. Conservatives splitting their votes here like they did in Iowa is a sign to Mitt Romney that he can keep on winning. The 2012 Consumer Electronics Show opens in Las Vegas, showcasing the latest gadgets and gizmos in nearly 2 million feet of convention space. Microsoft executives open the show with a preview of the company's next operating system, Windows 8. Also on display, the slimmest phone yet, measuring just under 7 millimeters thick, and an 84-inch 3D flat-screen television with super high resolution and make a picture. More than 140,000 attendees will likely attend the four-day show, which will feature Justin Bieber unveiling an entertainment robot developed and marketed by a Vietnamese company. Still ahead on News Channel 9 tonight, a 3 by 5 card, a glass of water, and a good breakfast. They're all things that one weight loss expert says can help you shed pounds. His tips up next. Plus, a bootylicious bundle of joy. Jay-Z and Beyonce release a joint statement about the birth of baby girl blue. The proud papa drops a glorious single, revealing some intimate details about the new family. That's coming up in your showbiz buzz. By now, some people who resolve to lose weight in the new year are starting to fall off the bandwagon. But we have tips on making good and that, on that promise to yourself. Scott Darren, a longtime cardiologist, has recently also become a medical bariatrician, helping patients with weight loss. Dr. Darren shared some of the tips he gives his patients. Eat breakfast. Your body needs fuel in the morning to avoid going into starvation mode. But ditch the donut or bagel, which are pure carbohydrates. So a better breakfast would be something like egg beaters 
Uh, and uh, my breakfast is a morning star sausage patty, which is uh, soy-based protein, that and egg beaters. Uh, it's virtually pure protein, a little bit of fat, and I am not getting an insulin spike. And when patients do that, all of a sudden, that little thing can begin a turn down in, in weight long term. And reach for water, never sugary drinks. Our brains often confuse thirst and hunger. So I ask my patients, when you're hungry, try a tall glass of water. If 15 minutes later you're still hungry, eat something. Make that something a heart healthy snack like almonds or walnuts. He also tells patients to write on a 3 by 5 card the reasons they want to lose weight and take time to eat your food. I ask my patients to eat mindfully by putting a fork full of food in their mouth, wait uh, for 20 or 30 chews, actually count silently, and to do that put your fork down, this is actually quite hard, and take your hand off the fork. When you do that and you chew it for 20 or 30 times, you're maximizing, maximizing your enjoyment and you're also lengthening the, the meal. And finally, get physical activity. The more we move, the more alive we stay. And not only physically uh, are we better, but emotionally, as, as, our, as we know, our brains produce this compound called beta endorphin, which gives us a sense of uh, peace and well-being. To check out these tips again, visit our website, ktsm.com, and click on this story. When we return on News Channel 9 tonight, Kim Kardashian's Super Bowl ad gets sidelined why a sneaker company gave her the boot coming up in your showbiz buzz. Plus, we keep up with Chief Meteorologist Chuck DeBroder. He'll have a look at your week's worth of weather after the break. The Weather Authority. News Channel 9 Chief Meteorologist Chuck DeBroder. Well, the borderland started off a little colder. We ended up uh, still with a chill in the air. We're starting to chill down right now. 48 clear skies in El Paso. Las Cruces 43. Winds are light, but they'll remain steady. And on the light side, that should keep us up a few degrees from what we bottomed out this morning, uh, tomorrow morning. Anyway, 30, the low officially this morning. 32 is where we should be. 57, our average high. 54 at 246 this afternoon. 1 and 72, the records for today. Made it into the upper 50s. Not a bad day for us around Columbus and Deming. Up around Sierra County, 53, 47 in Guadalupe Pass and a nice 64 in Ruidoso. OK, no clouds just yet, but we'll watch a colder Canadian air mass dive in here early Thursday morning. Do have some high clouds moving in. We'll have some patchy high clouds early tonight, clear out, and then we'll see more coming in from the west. Now, what happened to the systems that brought the cold air and even that snow to kick off our work week on the Franklins? The low is right here, and we see the cold front tracking off to the east and behind it clear skies. You can see a couple little shots of cold air moving out of the north. They'll push down the Rockies tomorrow and then move into our area. You can see around our interactive radar, there's some snow way up into Montana on the back side of that cold front. We take a look at our Futurecast computer system, taking you from 6 o'clock tonight in through the next uh, 48 hours or so. You can see we have a cold front that will back in here. It'll be a windy, especially on the west side of the mountains on Thursday. 37 are high officially in Salt Lake City, 74 in New Orleans, and 52 Chicago, 54 in the nation's capital. Around the borderland tonight, we'll dip down into the teens still around the tip of the Sacramento's, 37 Wattis, upper 20s in TRC and Alamogordo. There's the edge of that cold front. It'll move into the mountains first. Won't affect our temperatures. In fact, the westerly winds will warm us up. 60s, maybe even close to the mid 60s in Wattis and Deming, 58 TRC. Clear skies, overnight low 32. Winds will pick up 5 to 15 miles per hour and then get uh, 20 plus miles per hour late in the afternoon. 63 breezy in El Paso. We drop to 50. That front will make it windy on the west side. Cold Friday morning, we stay cool. Sunday, though, we actually warm up, so no more snow in the forecast, just rain into Monday. <laughs>